And we're back. Sorry for the little delay there. I was busy saving the highlight reels from last time, as I'd promised. And we're just on a roll here. I'm just so excited about all the cool stuff we're doing. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for just the opportunity to do these amazing things with this wonderful community of people. Pray help me to focus on what I need to do and to let go of all the million or so other things that I could be doing. Help me to build something that my son and other kids would really enjoy playing that will really help them express themselves while cultivating valuable programming skills. Help me to keep myself, my body, my family, my spirit healthy as I try to do this work. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, for this episode of Awesome Stuff Badly with me, Uncle Dr. Ernie, we're going to try and actually start controlling our turtles. Ooh. Okay, here we go. In our last episode, we got this little transformation working so that we could actually knock our turtle over there. And now we need to make it a little bit smarter so that we can control it. And let's see, we didn't really need this after all. It wasn't our math that was a problem. It was our precedence of how we were doing our objects, uh, our arithmetic. Can we make that actually make it more consistent in how we're doing it? No, don't get me wrong, math is important. I just don't believe it's the end all be all of computation. And I don't want to screw up my language just to make mathematical formulas um, terser. I believe it's better to make things consistent and explicit as much as possible, but just ridiculously simple so they don't mind all of the explicit explicification, explication, explicitness, whatever. Okay. Now, we can draw this turtle if these things are set properly, but we have to make sure that they get set properly. So, that takes us back to the issue of control. So, what we have happening here is our draw button object is getting me I wonder if that might be part of the problem, if that's giving the wrong scope for setting that. Um, so the first question is whether um, we are mutating the object correctly as we perform these attributes. Um, Let's let that click. So let's try that first. Okay. And inspect our element. And the console here. It's getting this little document here where we can see. Let's just make that the actual dictionary to make it nice and immediately obvious of what's going on. It's an object, not just a static dictionary, but that's just the way we roll in JavaScript. Okay. Then... Um, let's run something. Something funky going on there. Let's um, change this here since this is probably what we actually care about is that we want to show on a click what the state of the document is. So first, we check to make sure we're mutating it properly. The object becomes 5-4, so it should be like 5-2, 5-1, which 
is awesome, except it's not showing up here. Okay, so we know we're mutating it correctly. That's the first step. The next step is figuring out why we're not updating our um, drawing when the, uh, whatchamacallit, Transform X. Right. So what's going to be happening? So let's see. So when we redraw this, let's put an element. We should move up so we can actually see this poor girl. I know you're feeling really lonely in the back down there when nobody is seeing you. Um, let's try that again. Okay, there's our turtle there, and it's transforming. Let's actually make that a little bit more explicit. Transform. Alright, so when we Run this, it draws our turtle, it looks at that, and when we do these things, it mutates the turtle, it does not rerun the transform. So that's what's going wrong. So what we want is, the thing that's being transformed is actually called here. And so here our draw path is being is a binding thing, so it's bound to a value, but somehow our dictionary attribute is not being similarly regenerated. And what if we do it like this? Why don't you make it a, a world? Isn't it already a world? No, that's not a world. Um, yeah. Then if we do that, then we can dict put ask and transform dict dot put um, transform and then we should be passing that as a dictionary which is now a reactive dictionary, which the svg.d should know about, and it should all just work, right? Okay, that was unexpected. So it looks like we're not getting any transformations at all this time. Ah, because this is supposed to be dict.get. Oh, unhappy camper. Okay, let's take a step back here. Let's look at our reactive. This has got to happen in the tutorial somewhere. I can get you from here since I don't have a direct link. I wouldn't think that idea if I did. Uh, 
You need to choose a model, two cells. It's right here. You pass it all these things. So, uh, it's okay. So, this is the static generation of templates, elements, you can match behaviors to them. Mm, special attributes, uh, style, class. Okay, reactive templates, here we go. Now, what we want to do is display the template directly, bind into that. Oh, is that all? So this thing here is okay. Uh, where are we? Is that all? Yep, that's what happens if you off so badly. Often you get really wound up over ridiculously simple things. Or not. And okay. Oops. Curse you. I'm messing up my own algorithms here. Don't want that, so I want to check when calling. Transform is being called. Um, Okay, now, just so we're clear, we have a dictionary here. Where these things are bound to behaviors. When I get that directly, it's fine. Oh, I just need world.find, since find is not in the global namespace. And, and, woohoo, yay, we got a move a turtle, we got a move a turtle, woohoo, awesome, awesome, so happy. We have a reactively moving turtle. Woohoo, woohoo, woohoo. <sighs> happy moment. In fact, I'm so happy that I'm going to stop the episode early so I can just enjoy it and uh, just meditate on what to do next. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!